Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, good afternoon friends, uh, so uh, let us take up uh, another component of uh, rural sociology uh, with regard to continuity and change and uh, here in the unit fourth we have changing agrarian social uh, agrarian structure and rural development concern in India in rural society and uh, within that framework uh, another good component which has to be dealt is uh, farmer society in India. This is basically chapter 18th. Uh, of uh, uh, the whole uh, component and uh, chapter 18 which is devoted to farmer suicide in rural India. I think uh, farmer suicide uh, definitely is going to be a grey issue especially when we try to speak about uh, the <coughs> Indian society and uh, I think uh, nowhere we try to accept that uh, uh, suicide is going to be seen as something which is uh, going to be quite uh, uh, familiar phenomenon and I think uh, we try to see that uh, across India uh, we try to see certain shades of uh, farmer suicide and definitely uh, it raises certain important issues. So basically this uh, uh, chapter is going to highlight the changing uh, uh, it will try to discuss upon or highlight the issues related to farmer suicide, uh, its trends and the possible solutions. Uh, friends, I think uh, as we have talked about uh, the issue of uh, uh, rural development in general, we have talked about uh, how we try to see the issue of uh, green revolution and also we try to speak about the various uh, movements which are associated with the rural society which we try to see in terms of uh, uh, the agrarian movement and the rural movements which have been there. We have talked about the Bhaga movement, we have talked about the Telangana movement. Uh, we have also talked about the Naxalite movement which has been there which are part and parcel of uh, uh, the Indian society across the different states. And uh, of recent uh, we have also talked about the issue of new farmers movement. So that way I think uh, the rural society is uh, full of uh, uh, what you can say uh, uh, full of uh, changes in terms of uh, the dynamism and this dynamism is visible basically through. Uh, the understanding of uh, these uh, uh, unrest which has been there and these uh, agrarian unrest basically uh, speaks about uh, uh, both the positive and the negative. Uh, positive definitely can be seen in terms of how uh, we can evaluate the process of change whereby the society by themselves are trying to bring about the changes in their existing structure. And also we try to see that uh, these changes are to be made uh, visible uh, through the various movements or revolt that has been there. Either we try to speak about the historical uh, connotation, uh, the fight against the state whether it may be the British state or sometimes we try to see the, uh, the state uh, the, uh, in the form of government or we try to see the policies which have been implemented by the state. So in all practical senses uh, we try to see that uh, the movements have been uh, seen as the growing concern and I think uh, parallelly we also try to see that uh, the new initiatives in the form of uh, agreement policies which have been uh, generated by the government uh, sometimes it has also led to some hue and crisis. I think uh, all of us may be familiar with the uh, new um, uh, bills which have been introduced with regard to the change in the uh, what you can say agriculture scenario, the agricultural bill uh, which has been introduced and uh, how it is going to create uh, the hue and crisis with regard to the uh, various farmers across uh, the states. And that way we try to see that uh, uh, the sort of peasant and the farmers they are not going to be the uh, masses, they are not going to be the people who are basically trying to uh, be just uh, docile, uh, they also have the revolutionary character. And that way I think uh, we try to see that uh, they are visible in the form of certain resistance uh, which they try to show in the form of various movements. 
but I think this is the uh, one can say the brighter side which basically speaks about that how uh, farmers are uh, to be seen as uh, an active agents and how they are going to bring about the transformation by themselves uh, through certain initiatives trying to resist the, the state, the policies and many other issues. But on the contrary, if you try to see, basically we also try to find out that uh, there are certain important concerns which are happening in the uh, rural society and because of that, I think uh, the negative consequences are also visible uh, especially among the peasant and the farmers. And we basically try to see that uh, uh, we had many time uh, cases which are coming up although the frequency may be low, but sometimes we try to see that uh, the, the cases of farmer suicide uh, definitely are going to be visible uh, in various uh, uh, newspapers. And also we try to see that uh, the farmer suicides are basically seen as the negative consequences of uh, the development. And as we know that uh, the, the, the issue of uh, farmer suicide is uh, basically seen as uh, an issue which is of concern to uh, the policy makers, uh, uh, to the politicians for that sake or maybe trying to speak about uh, the general masses in India. But important is that uh, what make them to commit suicide and definitely suicide always have a, a negative connotation for any society because when we try to speak about the suicide. Uh, definitely it is seen as uh, the person who is been away from the world uh, and sometimes uh, uh, we have the different explanations which we are going to uh, deal with that what make the person to commit suicide and uh, how or what are the consequences of that. But before that what are the various policies or what are the different concerns which leads to the uh, suicides. So, I think uh, these are certain issues uh, which uh, will be highlighted uh, in this chapter. And the discussion uh, basically will try to involve into the various issues which has led to the farmer suicide. I think uh, to begin with, uh, we can just say that uh, uh, soon after independence, the scarcity of grains was projected in India as the reason for hunger and famine. And the basis upon which the massive development projects led by science and technology uh, such as the green revolution uh, were justified. So, virtually on the one hand we have how the sort of uh, dependency uh, has been generated uh, with regard to the agriculture that was one stage and then second thing was that how they are to be seen as the producer sites, the rural India has been seen as the producer site and thirdly we try to see that uh, in order to uh, supplement the nation, uh, they are to be seen as the producers for the nation. And that way sometimes we have various issues which are related to uh, the food sovereignty, the food security for that sake or sometimes we try to speak about the issues uh, related to a certain amount of dignity. Uh, so, I think uh, somewhere we try to see that these sort of mixes are there uh, which are basically been visible in the rural India. And uh, Green Revolution was seen basically as an answer to uh, bring about the increase in the productivity as we have shared earlier also that uh, uh, green revolution was basically seen as an outcome of uh, uh, the various uh, programs which have been initiated in India like the high yield variety seed uh, was the program which has came into prominence in 1970s. And then uh, we also try to see that uh, uh, the new uh, uh, technology which has been introduced in the rural India. Uh, so, there was a gradual shift whereby the society has moved from uh, the so called uh, subsistence economy to the uh, capitalistic economy. And that way I think uh, we try to see that uh, certain amount of structural changes have been brought about in the rural society. And in that format, uh, we try to see that uh, these uh, changes definitely were visible in various uh, forms. And I think uh, green revolution definitely has led to the enhancement of uh, the uh, what you can say crops, the grain productivity has increased. But on the contrary, it also has created certain nuances in the rural society. So, that way we try to see that uh, there are certain ups and downs which are uh, revolving in and around the developmental issues uh, which has been either uh, injected into the rural society or sometimes they have been taken up by the rural society, but it has the severe consequences also. The green revolution which was been introduced in Asia in general in the 1960s 
was entirely driven by the pursuit of higher productivity. I think uh, somewhere we can say that it was having a certain amount of uh, uh, capitalistic uh, tone uh, that way making the rural uh, in line with the industrial whereby the capitalistic uh, sort of uh, capitalistic mode has to be uh, invented where the production has to be made in such a fashion that it is going to meet the demand of the masses. And that way I think uh, the pursuit for higher productivity was seen as a uh, uh, one thing uh, which has basically made the society to move. Uh, after half of century of the implementation of the green revolution, the new forms of scarcity has been projected and the cause of the newer forms of the rural vulnerability was seen in the form of uh, what we are going to discuss that is the issue of suicide. And consequently, the developmental dominant developmental response these days uh, to the farmer suicide is to make agricultural economics remunerative or uh, it is to be seen in terms of uh, the payment uh, through a variety of techno institutional changes. So, techno institutional changes are basically seen as uh, the way or the wire media through which uh, we can enhance the economic remunerative prices uh, especially with regard to agriculture and that is how we try to see the changes are to be brought about in the rural society. Uh, for the past couples of years, farmer suicide has become an issue in the academic narratives, especially the policy analysis and in the everyday discourse. The issue came at the time when the debate of the agrarian economy was shifting from the debate of mode of production of the 1960s to the growing crisis of the economy in the 1980s and of recent the farmer suicide in the recent years. I think uh, the study by Daniel Thorner in 1982 or Kathleen Gawke for that sake in 1980s, uh, they are basically trying to discuss about these issues. However, the beginning of the agrarian crisis requires to be located much earlier to the beginning of suicide, uh, which goes back to the 1980s uh, when the, ter the terms of trades were, were dominating the state policies. I think uh, this is where we try to see that uh, the footing of the suicide was located in the 1980s when the term of trade were going against the agriculture. And I think uh, this is basically where we try to see that agri agrarian crisis is basically seen as an outcome of uh, the changes which have taken place in terms of trade and which were going against the agriculture. Uh, basically, uh, people like uh, uh, Balagopal or Ashok Rudra, they were basically trying to speak about this particular issue. Similarly, uh, Lipton's work on uh, has uh, in <coughs> indicated on the urban biased policies. So, I think uh, these are certain issues uh, which we try to see were dominating the state policies and farming was becoming a loose proportion. I think uh, this is where we try to see uh, the drift has taken place that on the one side, uh, we have the issue of agrarian crisis which is emerging because of uh, the changes which have been introduced in the state. And uh, with regard to that, we try to see that uh, the trade uh, which was basically meant for market uh, production has led to certain amount of urban bias policies. And these urban bias policies has basically led to certain change in the equations with regard to the farming practices. Uh, nonetheless, the crisis of agrarian economy uh, during the decade of 1980s was expressed in the different forms. It was largely led by the farmers movement in the different parts of India as I said earlier because the farmers movement definitely was seen as uh, trying to resist or also trying to oppose uh, various policies which has been uh, put by the state. Uh, nowhere their protests were translated into the form of suicide because the organizational form of farmer struggle or the movement provided them a sense of identity and belongingness. However, a shift in the discourse came during the time when the Indian state was succumbing to the pressure of the global capital. So, virtually we try to see that uh, the initial uh, uh, what you can say as I said that uh, the farmers movement which has been there was seen as the positive stories basically they were seen as their own identity uh, the, the, the fight for their dignity in that sense and the sense of identity all these things were coming together and they were trying to uh, stand uh, in totality. But uh, when we try to speak about uh, the Indian state being uh, 
uh, succumb to the pressure of the global capital in the form of new, edu uh, new economic policy uh, that was seen as a turning point and that has been pointed out by Asdi uh, in 2004 that uh, no farmers movement advocated a suicide as a form of tactics to oppose or confront the global capital. In fact, during the current debates, uh, the farmers movement was also losing its tempo uh, in the rise of the new uh, economic policies. Thus, in the midst of the failure of the declining tempo of the farmers movement, uh, one can locate the suicide becoming a fact. So, virtually we can say that uh, somewhere the pace of farmers movement, the, the, the sort of pressure which has been generated by the farmers movement, uh, when it has shown a shift in terms of a decline, uh, there we try to see that uh, uh, the, the issue of suicide has become uh, come into prominence. So, I think uh, we try to see that the decline of farmers movement has led to the rise of the farmers suicide. Uh, this is how we try to relate and that has been pointed out by Asdi also in 2004. Interestingly, uh, during the decade of globalization, no activist from Indian side committed the suicide protesting against the globalization. I think this is where we try to see the strength of uh, Indian society uh, because of various institutional forces. Uh, we try to see that uh, uh, the suicide was minimized. However, Lee Kwing Hai a South Korean farmer and a lawmaker in Cancun who was holding a banner that read WTO, WTO kills farmer and committed the first suicide against the globalization. Now, this is basically where we try to see a symbolic shift which has taken place that Lee Kuen Hai uh, who had committed suicide under the banner of WTO kill farmers and that is how we try to see that. Uh, effect of globalization was been visible in the form of a uh, uh, symbolization uh, which has been projected through this particular instance. Uh, Lee was the former president of the Korean National Futures Farmers and the Fishermen's Association and uh, uh, he was basically uh, trying to oppose the globalization uh, in terms of uh, uh, the issue that uh, it is going to impede or it is going to bring about the drastic structural changes in the uh, rural society. And thus one can uh, see that farmer suicide was a result of the deep or the sharpening agrarian crisis emanating from the capitalistic development in agriculture. Although there are five important debates which attempts to look at the issue of suicide differently, but still we try to find out that uh, the farmer suicide was basically seen as an outcome of uh, the agrarian crisis which has come up because of uh, the issue of capitalistic development in the agriculture. But before going into the detail about uh, the issue of farmer suicide, uh, I think uh, the issue that becomes prime is uh, the phenomenon of suicide and how it has to be seen. Uh, basically, we try to see that uh, uh, suicide has been studied sociologically. So, uh, being a student of sociology, uh, let us understand how we can have the understanding of the suicide sociologically. So, basically uh, translated into the rates, the suicide could be understood not just as an individual action. Uh, with meaning located in the particular context, but it is collectively seen as a much wider index of the social decay or the progress. The problem of definition also arises and suicide is a tricky concept to pin down. An existential riddle stunning in its opaqueness as Brown has put it, how for example do we classify what have been called as the partial suicide. So, I think somewhere we try to see it is difficult to really uh, conceptualize suicide or categorize suicide in a, as a specific sociological phenomenon, uh, but to some extent we can say that it can be understood uh, sociologically that is going to be important and the credit goes to Imal Durkheim who had penned down in his classical sociological study uh, Lee's suicide in 1897. Uh, it is seen as the best known book about the topic in the social sciences and probably beyond uh, the ethnographic analysis of what lies behind people attempt to take their own lives remain relative, relatively a few in number. Uh, for Durkheim, uh, suicide was an objective social fact irreducible to individual psychology or biology uh, with a different social formation creating propensity towards what he identified as the four different types of suicide. Uh, in highly 
regulated society, suicides were likely to be altruistic uh, because he tried to see the four conditions uh, which basically uh, motivates the person to go for suicide. Uh, altruistic which was been seen as a phenomenon, altruistic suicide which was been seen with regard to highly regulated society with the individual needs subordinated to those of the wider society that is a fatalistic. So, I think uh, we have a range of uh, uh, suicide which has been talked about uh, by uh, Imal Durkheim, uh, where when the regulations were so oppressive as to allow no alternative possible actions that is another way in which uh, the suicide can be uh, treated. So, basically we try to see that uh, Durkheim saw as an under regulated conditions the post industrial society uh, where we have the anomic or the egoistic suicide. So, virtually we try to see that uh, uh, suicide was basically seen in the different format depending upon the conditionality. Uh, egoistic suicides occur when the individual becomes detached from his or her society and the anomic suicide takes place in the context where there is lack of fit between the individual uh, leading to uh, uh, his society uh, as a member, uh, where the aspirations for example are out of the step with the possibility of achieving those aspirations, uh, we try to find that it may lead to the anomic suicide. So, the suicide rates as Durkheim showed uh, through his use of statistics were generally fairly constant for the countries in which they were recorded with the major rise or decrease in the suicide rates indexing the wider social changes. Uh, within each society, Durkheim also noted some common variation. Those who were not married uh, were more likely, uh, <coughs> likely than the married to commit suicide, uh, for example, as were those without the children, they were also having the frequency of suicides more. And although the soldiers were likely, uh, likely than civilians to take their own lives, suicide rates in general were higher during the peace time uh, than in the war situation. So, I think these are certain conditionalities which have been talked about by Durkheim and basically we try to see that Durkheimian insights remain useful and precisely because they are so broad that they can also grow, uh, uh, speak about the differences between the different incidents of suicides. Uh, Durkheim also assumed that cultures were homogeneous entities and he made a distinction in suicide rate across the class boundaries. For example, uh, between men and women uh, within a given milieu. So, that way if you try to see, I think uh, Durkheim has clearly tried to speak about the issue of suicide. Uh, one possibility in terms of uh, the <coughs> altruistic suicide, uh, whereby we try to see that uh, uh, when the members are closer to the society, uh, societal norms and under pressure they are committing suicide. Uh, we have the egoistic suicide, where we try to see that. Uh, the members are away from the society, societal norms and that they create suicide. And then we have the anomic suicide, uh, when we try to see that uh, there is lesser regulation by the state, the policies uh, that also create uh, the uh, so called anomic suicide. And then also we have the fatalistic suicide and the fatalistic suicide is basically seen as a condition whereby we have uh, the high uh, deregulations uh, in the society. So, uh, we try to see all the contrast. Uh, we have the higher integration and the lesser integration, both the extremes will lead to the suicide. Higher regulation and the lesser uh, regulations, they can also create a suicide. So, virtually we try to see that uh, the suicides are basically uh, seen as a physical, biological or the physical entity. But if you try to see or if you try to locate that uh, in a specific uh, societal framework, we try to see that uh, it is based on the societal outcome. And that way I think uh, when we try to see the farmer suicide, we basically try to see that the farmer suicide are to be seen uh, basically in relation to the uh, societal context. Uh, either it is the question of the state, uh, many times we may relate uh, certain uh, suicides, uh, farmer suicide, uh, we can categorize it into the case of egoistic suicide, uh, when the members are being detached from the uh, mainstream society, that also is one possibility. Uh, sometimes we can say that uh, it may be seen as an anomic suicide, uh, where we try to see the conditions which are going to be devastated and we try to see that lesser uh, controls are there that also can create uh, certain amount of suicide into the category of uh, 
uh, uh, <coughs> what you can say anomic suicide. And finally, we can have the fatalistic one uh, where we try to see that uh, over regulations uh, which have been generated by the state can also lead to certain amount of suicide. So, in India where suicide remains illegal and taboo uh, with the incidents recorded by the National Crime uh, Record Bureau uh, under the reporting uh, which might be uh, visible in the form of higher rates of suicide. An interesting twist in the Indian context is that while the suicides may go under reported among the general population for the fear of repra uh, reprisals, the farmer suicide in response to which they have been widely publicized. Uh, basically with regard to the state government compensation uh, that sometimes is visible. So, we might uh, well have to be uh, uh, might well see that it has been over reported uh, because of uh, uh, drawing the attention of the government towards that particular issue. So, sometimes uh, we may say that uh, since uh, suicide is something which is, has to be seen uh, across uh, the section across the society. And sometimes we have the distorting figures, the statistical picture which has been projected sometimes may not may not give us the, the ground realities in the real sense. That is why this issue becomes a bit trickish. But while agrarian suicide is certainly an issue, the farmers are not only the population committing the suicides, but if we try to estimate in this collection, uh, we are trying to find out that uh, uh, we see farmer suicide as a problem for the public policy and delineating the problem in this way makes it straightforward for the government agencies to manage um, this issue of farmer suicide. Uh, Daniel Monster, <coughs> uh, he was basically speaking about uh, uh, focusing upon the agrarian suicide and recognizes well of well the political choices at work in framing the issue of farmer suicide as a distinctive type of self cooling and drawing on the field work in the Wynard district of Kerala. Uh, he argues that much of the problem is not the focus on farmer suicide per se, but the lack of reflection uh, in much of the literature on what the implications of defining farmer suicide as a particular kind of problem might be and also the lack of uh, the ethnographic specificities in the discussion on the issue can also uh, not make us clear about the whole issue. So, virtually we try to see that. Uh, uh, sociologically speaking, uh, there are uh, the <coughs> different ways of looking to this particular phenomenon. Sometimes they have to be seen uh, with regard to the individualistic value, sometimes they are to be related with uh, uh, the so called state policies and also we have to see that uh, uh, they can be seen with regard to uh, the third party trying to come up into the picture and trying to highlight that particular issue as a pressure group. So, that way I think. Uh, the locus of the farmer suicide has to be seen across and it may vary from uh, context to context and that is why sometimes we do not have a standardized understanding of about the farmer suicide in terms of theorization or in terms of uh, the specific uh, values. Now, uh, further if you try to move on the issues of uh, the debates on suicide, uh, first we have to see that the debate try, tries to locate the su suicide as a part of multiple crises. I think that of course, is uh, the starting point. The crises which are ecological, economic and social and also they are each are interlinked with each other. The ecological crisis is the result of the hybrid seeds, chemical fertilizers and the pesticides causing the erosion of uh, the so <coughs> soil fertility and increasing crops are susceptible to the pest and the disease. So, the heavy indebtedness led to the economic crisis. In the final analysis, we can see that uh, the debate attempts to understand the suicide through the anthropological tool as has been pointed out by A. R. Vasavi in 1999. Uh, another attempt is to locate the crisis of suicide to the negative growth of agrarian economy. Uh, it has to be seen in the recent past as argued by Vandana Shiva and she become she comes closer to the Marxist critique particularly the argument of Patnaik, uh, <coughs> wherein the letter locates the reason in the liberalization, uh, new colonialism and the imperialist globalization. So, we can see that uh, uh, the suicide are been linked with the issue of liberalization, new colonialism and the imperial globalization. The argument raised by Vanna Shiva is also to understand the larger linkage emanating from the globalization, uh, which has created a crisis for agriculture 
and pro <coughs> produce a negative economy uh, in the countryside. And that of course, is seen as an important issue which has uh, generated the number of suicide in the uh, rural society. In relation to the argument, we try to see another important debate which can be located with regard to the reason for the suicide uh, as has been uh, spoken and called as the Mac McKinsey model of development that creates a space for the industry driven agriculture which ultimately translated into the agribusiness. So, I think uh, somewhere we try to see that uh, this sort of development is basically uh, including the information technology sometimes creates a very different picture in the uh, rural side countryside and this model of development has not only accelerated the crisis leading to the environmental catastrophe, but also has destroyed the millions of rural livelihood. So, virtually we try to see that industry driven uh, agriculture uh, along with the industrial information technology sometimes is going to bring about uh, uh, the new sort of crisis uh, which may be visible in the form of farmer suicide. And another way in which we can uh, raise this particular issue is the suicide exclusively been seen as a phenomenon that is the increasing indebtedness. So, if the higher uh, rate of indebtedness uh, which is seen as an economic phenomenon or the depth, depth trap. So, that basically lead to uh, the person to go for suicide. So, we try to see that uh, another important uh, discourse which can be uh, located uh, with regard to the suicide uh, may be seen as the wrong policies uh, which are been pursued by the central or the state government over the past few decades and even uh, they are going to be uh, creating certain amount of disharmony with regard to substantial investment in the agriculture and that sometimes lead the uh, person uh, to commit the suicide. And finally, we can see that uh, uh, there are also an attempts to locate the reason in the form of multiple issues uh, such as the <coughs> we can see the uh, flood situations, manipulations of the prices by the traders, suppliers of the spurious pesticides and the seeds, the decline in the prices of agricultural produce and increase in the cost of agricultural inputs uh, followed by successive droughts across the year uh, in certain places and also the neglect of farmers by the previous state governments. So, I think we try to see that there are multiple factors other than the immediate causes uh, which can also lead to the suicide. So, we can say that uh, sometimes the factors may not be the direct factors which are uh, contributing towards the suicide, sometimes the indirect uh, 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 indirect uh, uh, forces or the indirect uh, uh, factors are also leading uh, for the commitment of suicide among the farmers. But important is that uh, the far farmer suicides are to be related with uh, various issues. It may be related to the government policies, it may be related to uh, the globalization, it may be related to the uh, failure of the state policies, it may be due to the uh, innovations with regard to the uh, uh, advent of uh, capitalism in the agriculture in the form of agribusiness or also we can see that uh, it can be seen as a hype which is coming from the media in order to bring about the uh, higher level of compensation to the farmers. So, we can see that uh, there are various uh, uh, factors uh, which may contribute towards the understanding of farmer suicides differently and in the Indian context especially if you try to speak about uh, as we are discussing the agrarian capitalism which was been introduced into the social structure existing social structure uh, is was seen as an important uh, reasons. Basically, we try to see that it allowed the different social structure to coexist along with the capitalistic uh, mode uh, which has allowed the presence of different social structure along the ca agrarian capitalism and this did not mean that the state intervention was limited its in intervention was conditioned by factors which are leading to the increasing productivity interlinking of the local with the international markets bringing in the large amount of land under the capitalistic development uh, removing the social categories uh, who are on the drag on the economy and finally creating the new social categories such as the rich peasantry uh, who can partake in the capitalistic development so we can see that uh, there are different forces uh, which are working in and out the countryside uh, which are basically creating certain amount of changes in the agrarian social structure and that basically has led to 
the advent of uh, the pharmacocide. One can say that uh, uh, the method which has been introduced by the green revolution uh, which created the surplus food uh, no doubt in that, but it has also allowed the global capital capitalist to enter into the domain of agriculture uh, through the means of seeds, the fertilizers, uh, pesticides for that sake and it was done through the means of uh, uh, land reforms also. So, we try to see that uh, somewhere the partial successfulness or partial failures which have been seen across various states uh, like for example, the land reforms in Karnataka uh, has been very successful, but also we try to see that uh, uh, we find out that uh, the intervention of market in the form of modern forces that has also created uh, or devastated the issue of uh, uh, pharma suicides in Karnataka. So, virtually we try to see both the contrast are visible the successful cases within that uh, state or region and also we try to see the adverse in the form of pharma suicide and that is where we try to see the complexity emerges uh, with regard to the pharma suicide. And we basically try to see that uh, the failure of the Indian states in many times uh, may have resulted into uh, the whole issue. And along with that I think uh, the most important thing that we have to really learn uh, in terms of uh, uh, the growing cases of the pharma suicide is the growing crisis because the growing crisis uh, in the agriculture uh, basically or in the countryside is basically uh, paving the way for the suicide. So, basically we try to see that the growing crisis is not the result of the path of capitalistic development that the Indian state pursued over the past couple of years, but also due to the global capitalism pursuing the same path. So, virtually we try to see that global capitalism was been brought or introduced as a new methodology to link the autonomous farmers or the social categories with the larger market. So, I think uh, the shift which we were talking about in terms of move from the subsistence economy to the capitalistic economy was seen as one important force which has led to the transformation in the agrarian social structure. The path of development has increased the disparity between the urban and the rural areas. It is true that the poverty percentage over the past two decades had declined considerably between the urban and the rural areas. While the disparity has increased or widened, uh, we also try to see that these changes has the influence upon the whole phenomenon. NSSO has counted that between 1977-78 to 1999-2000, the percentage of people living below the poverty line has declined from 51.3 percent to 26.1 percent, uh, while in absolute number it has declined from 328.9 million to 260.3 millions. So, that is what we try to see that uh, uh, we have the betterment in terms of the economic progress which was been visible the statistics clearly speak about the fact that uh, uh, there is the high uh, yield in terms of the productivity uh, even the people who are below the poverty line has also drastically improved upon and we try to see that the conditions of uh, uh, the rural society has tremendously increased. But it does not mean that uh, uh, you have the better prosperity uh, you have the lesser suicide. So, on the one hand we try to see that pros prosperity has been uh, coming on the other hand we also try to see the number of cases of suicide uh, is also visible. So, we try to see that uh, uh, it has not only made uh, the farmers a debt free categories rather it has trapped the farmers in the vicious circle of the debt, uh, debt trap. So, the debt nets which has been there and the farmers we are been which are been part of that uh, because of uh, gaining more and more that sometimes has made the things uh, more difficult. So, there is no farmer who is not indebted uh, uh, to the financial institutions, the cooperatives and that way I think uh, they are directly linked with the market uh, with the various other institutions of which they have never been part in the previous situations. So, the failure of the cooperative institutions has further made the large number of farmers to fall back on the money lenders who charge the exuberant interest. So, this uh, charges varies from uh, a percentage high percentage from 30 to 60 percent and sometimes it is going to be more devastating. And interestingly the two kinds of money lenders have emerged in the areas where the farmers uh, have committed suicide. One type of money lenders uh, come from within the rural side 
uh, while the either who are either the big farmers or the capitalistic farmers and the second type of are the money lenders who are coming from the urban areas. So, we try to see that uh, the new form of categories have emerged with regard to the money lending from within and from outside and that is where we try to see that uh, uh, it has acted as uh, the new form of a business uh, whereby the rural banking the sort of cooperatives have failed and we try to see that uh, uh, these categories were introduced maybe uh, by by pressure or it is by compulsion uh, that we try to see that uh, the farmers were motivated towards uh, moving towards uh, these money lenders uh, which were uh, privately oriented. And we try to see that the money lenders use the different techniques to extract the interest unlike the uh, earlier decades the money lenders in the globalization uh, are seen as uh, trying to appropriate the land in the event of farmers fail to pay the rent and this is because of uncertainty involved in the agrarian economy. Also we try to see as Asdi has pointed out that agrarian economy requires the physical presence of the physical labor uh, of the money lenders and which the latter always uh, sought to avoid and this is the reason why the money lenders demand the interest rather than attaching the property uh, because uh, somewhere it is seen as a vicious circle the higher demand for the interest uh, may put them into trap and once they are into that, that into that trap so they cannot come out. So, we try to see what Asdi is trying to point out that uh, this is seen as a vicious circle uh, whereby the farmers the peasantry are basically or the farmers are moving towards uh, uh, these debt traps in the hands of the private money lenders and once they are into that trap so they are continuing with that. And we also try to see that uh, uh, the cost of product which has uh, increased through time uh, we are trying to see it in terms of uh, the high prices of agricultural produce the increase in the cost of input prices are seen as the reason and uh, uh, with that what has happened of course is that there is a withdrawal of subsidy whether it is given for the power or the for the fertilizers. So, this has led to the high input prices uh, with regard to the farmers and this is nothing but the reinforcement of the argument that the term of trade has uh, gone once again against the agriculture and this is this has created a situation of negative growth in the agricultural sector. So, virtually we try to find out that uh, the conditionality which has been created in the rural society especially uh, the withdrawal of subsidy uh, the withdrawal of the government support in the form of uh, uh, the formal structures sometimes has created or put the uh, farmers into the uh, pathetic situations. We also try to see that uh, uh, people who are below the poverty lines uh, they does not uh, have uh, what you can say multiple job opportunities other than the agrarian sectors and we try to see that large number of rural populations uh, who are moving uh, towards the urban sectors or because of the increasing pressure on the land uh, is also making a shift towards the new centers. And we try to find out that uh, uh, the fragmentation of land is there whereby making the lands less survival for the production. And uh, this is another re uh, important reason whereby the effective contribution by the family members in terms of collectivity and also uh, the, the composite use of land uh, in totality has been uh, broken away and that basically has uh, reduced the productivity uh, and in the name of uh, production if they are going for the intensive agriculture. So, their results are not going to be that ripe. And we also try to see that uh, there are certain other uh, forces uh, other than the issue of subsidy. Basically, we try to see that uh, the issue related to how the farmers are trying to uh, pose up in terms of forcing the farmers to pay the accumulated debt uh, is going to be uh, something which is going to be recycled and uh, that has been created again and again. Uh, in fact, uh, the United States has increased the subsidy to agriculture uh, which has been from 73.5 million dollars to 180 billion dollars uh, during the period when the global capitalism began to dominate the world. And these subsidies has benefited only the multinational corporations than the Indian farmers. And we try to see the multinational corporations had adopted a technique to control the third world by including the Indian agriculture. And one such method is to create a monoculture uh, through the new technology 
such as the seed technology which they wanted to introduce or the patent regime. Especially Monsanto for example introduced the Bt cotton in 2002 and that of course was basically seen as an important uh, shift basically in the process of which the Indian farmer lost 1 billion rupee due to the crop failure and this is not compensated with nor provided with any alternative to the loss. So, virtually we try to see that uh, the new changes which have been introduced by the multinational corporations with the introduction of the new seeds or sometimes the hybrid seeds and when the failure of these crops have taken place as an experiment sometimes they were into a drastic and uh, economic crisis and that conditions has basically ma made them uh, more vulnerable to these particular issues. So, we try to see that uh, these sort of conditionalities has basically led to a certain amount of changes. The large number of suicides uh, by the farmers in various parts of the country is perhaps the most distressing phenomenon which is observed in India over the decades. And we try to see that uh, uh, it is not that uh, uh, these things are visible uh, homogeneously across the state. The public concern that has reported and we try to see that the state governments like Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Maharashtra, uh, they have set up an inquiry commission to go into the phenomenon uh, of uh, uh, recording the uh, suicide rates in the respective states. And we try to find out that uh, uh, these studies sometimes uh, uh, they could not generate uh, the ground realities uh, which are been attached and we try to see that uh, uh, there are maybe the reasons for that because of uh, the extreme complex phenomenon uh, which are sometimes socio-economic, sometimes cultural or psychological factors and in that way we try to see that concrete policy making with regard to the farmer society uh, was not visible. Uh, it has been reported in the 10 years period from 1997 to 2006 that as many as uh, we can see around uh, uh, 16, uh, 166304 farmers uh, committed suicide in India. If we consider the 12 year period from 1995 to 2006, the figure is close to around 200,000. So, the exact figure uh, would be under estimation since the major states like Tamil Nadu and Rajasthan and also the few states, smaller states like Pondicherry did not report any farmers suicides uh, for one or the other reasons. So, we can say that sometimes the exact data of uh, the farmers suicide uh, is not uh, very much visible. The number of farm suicide has kept up more steady increase uh, over the period in the country in general and the year 1998 uh, we show a sharp increase in the number of uh, farmer suicide. And uh, we also try to see that around uh, uh, 16,000 suicides per year over the uh, few uh, years starting from 2001 onwards was been quite visible. So, virtually we try to see that uh, the intensity of the farmer suicide has been uh, on increase and uh, multiple factors which are associated with this particular phenomenon are going to be an important issue. And uh, we basically try to see that the suicide rate among the farmers were been defined as the number of farm suicide per 100,000 farmers uh, can be cal calculated on the reliable basis uh, for the year 2001. Because this the because the only year for which we have the reliable data on the numbers of farmers in the country and that is why we try to just calculate uh, with <coughs> regard to the census of India data. We try to find out that the acute agrarian crisis and we could find the reasonable reasons for that. Basically, we try to see that the four significant facts which are emerging from the discussions with regard to the farm society in the country as a whole are being visible uh, in the form of uh, the issues such as a large number of far, uh, farmers uh, closer to uh, 17,000 per year commit the suicide today in the country and a number we believe is unacceptable, unacceptably large. Second is the rate of suicide among the farmer is also likely to be very high in comparison with the rate of general population. And the third issue is the overwhelming proportion that is nearly 85 percent of the farm suicide are by the male farmers and the number of farm suicides by the young farmers accounting for nearly 30 percent of the total uh, which is not very small. And finally, we can say that the trend is uh, in both the number of suicides and the rate of suicide are distressing while the number seems to jump into a higher level in certain years especially 
in the year from 1998 to 2002 and we try to see that uh, <coughs> the, the exact reason for that is not very much known. So, virtually we try to see that uh, uh, these are certain conditionalities which are making the things more worse especially when we try to speak about the issue of uh, the trends uh, which normally we try to agree upon in terms of uh, the frequency of farmer suicide across the nation. Uh, we can have certain generalizations uh, which we can pose up in terms of the fact that uh, uh, one important thing uh, which we have to see across uh, the nation uh, is basically when we try to speak about that how the farmer suicides have been uh, seen as uh, uh, the important issue reported uh, during the core green revolution states uh, in India especially we are trying to speak about the state of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Kerala, Punjab and Maharashtra. They have been comparatively less reported uh, and discussed in the poorer states such as Bihar and Madhya Pradesh and also in the highly industrialized states such as Tamil Nadu and Gujarat. So, virtually we try to see that uh, the, the, the places where the intensity of green revolution has been high uh, that is the initial state which I have discussed uh, there the propensity of the farmer society has been high uh, whereas the, where the industrialization has been more there the farmer society has been less as been uh, discussed in the state of Tamil Nadu and Gujarat and where the poorer states are there there also we do not find much cases of farmer society. So, that is first thing which we can withdraw uh, we, we can withdraw from uh, the above evidences and also we try to see second important issue that the majority of the farmers taking their lives are small and medium land holders. The number of large farmers uh, taking their lives is uh, although significant, uh, but they are relatively small. So, the landless labors have rarely committed suicides. So, we try to see that uh, people who are small and the medium land holders they are committing suicide but the landless laborers are not committi committing suicides. So, uh, the issue of suicide is related with the issue of land. So, higher the uh, issue of land is involved. So, we have the higher rate of suicide. So, that is of course, uh, uh, one important thing which we can just make out and especially like the landless uh, laborers are not committing the farmer suicide. So, that is uh, going to be linked with the issue of land. Thirdly uh, and most importantly, that we try to see that uh, uh, the consensus that is uh, irrespective of caste and land holding is that we try to see that the majority of the farmers were the cotton growers in Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh. But also we try to see that uh, those who cultivated sugar cane, oil seeds, soya beans and vegetable rice and wheats growers uh, in Punjab, uh, export oriented plantation owner cultivators of uh, banana, pepper, coffee and vanilla in Kerala and the betel nut, potato and vegetables and sugar canes grown in Karnataka, they have also shown uh, the amount of uh, uh, farmer suicide. So, these farmers belong to the group of owner cultivators who pursue the commercial cultivation and who are principally constituent, who are basically seen as the principal constituency of the new farmers movement in India. So, I think somewhere we try to see the linkage which is coming up especially the new farmers movement, uh, the, the farmers movement uh, initiatives which have been taking place and also we try to see that uh, when they are moving from uh, towards the commercial cultivation that is sometimes aggravating the issue of farmer suicide. So, virtually now coming down to the whole issue of the farmer suicide in the different states in India in general, we try to find out that the top 5 states in terms of the farmer suicide uh, which has been reported in 2001 uh, is basically Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Ch uh, Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh uh, which accounts for nearly two third of the suicide in the country. And that way we try to see the top five states in terms of number of general suicides uh, which we try to see are being visible in Maharashtra, West Bengal, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. And that way we try to see that uh, uh, there are certain similarities with regard to the number of suicides which are happening in fewer states as compared to the state in general. So, we try to see that uh, uh, these instances are to be related with a specific phenomenon whereby the commercial farming are going to be quite high. And similarly, I think uh, the case of uh, uh, Pondicherry which also has shown the high rate of uh, uh, suicide uh, which were basically been seen in terms of uh, 
the people who are more into the small number of cultivators who are more into the uh, farm production with regard to the commercial cropping uh, which was also seen as an important phenomenon uh, with regard to the, the state of uh, uh, the, the Pondicherry. We also try to see that uh, Kerala which comes next to the Pondicherry uh, with a farmer suicide rate of 143 is much larger as compared to the Pondicherry and Goa. But in terms of number of suicide, it stands 7th among all the states partly because the extent of non-farm employment in the states is very high and hence the number of cultivators relatively is low. So, we can say that uh, the three states that is Kerala, Pondicherry and Goa have the higher general suicide rates. Uh, Pondicherry in fact has the highest suicide rate in the country followed by Kerala. So, I think uh, uh, we have the different uh, uh, combinations which are coming up uh, which try to speak about that how we are going to generalize this particular issue especially when we try to move uh, towards the other states like uh, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Jammu Kashmir and others where the general suicide rates as well as the farm suicide rate is seen as quite low. So, I think somewhere we try to see that uh, there is certain amount of mismatch uh, which is been visible across the state. The five top states which accounts for the higher number of farm suicide uh, are been visible basically the Karnataka with a farm suicide rate of 36.4 in 2001 uh, coming next to Kerala and with Chhattisgarh at 33.7 and Maharashtra at 29.9 percent not much behind. So, that is how we try to see that the farm suicide rate in Andhra Pradesh which is 19.2 is also significantly higher than the all India average uh, rate. So, it is worth to note that uh, the average general su suicide rate is uh, seen as a comparative picture across the all India rates and we try to see that uh, the regional pattern of the farmer suicide in India uh, which has been visible across 21 major states if you just try to categorize we find that the number of farm suicides in the state in terms of the farm suicide rate for 2001 and also with regard to the farm suicide as a percent of all suicides in the states and finally, the trend over the 1900s 97 to 2006 the number of farm suicide has been uh, viewed differently and on the basis of that if you try to see uh, we can have the four different groups of the states in the country which can be classified based upon the trends of farm suicide. Uh, first is the group 1 state, the group 1 states which includes Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh. The group 2 stage basically includes Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Goa, Pondicherry, West Bengal and Tripura. Group 3 states which includes the Assam, Gujarat, Haryana and Odisha and the group 4 state which includes Bihar, Jharkhand, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, Punjab and Jammu Kashmir along with Rajasthan. So, these are the different uh, zones which one can see uh, and accor according to uh, these zones we can have the different uh, analysis which are coming up with regard to the farmer suicide and we basically try to find out that uh, these sort of suicides are sometimes uh, creating the different stories and uh, we cannot have the standardized generalizations which can be seen across uh, <coughs> these states. Now, uh, let us try to understand that what are the different factors uh, which are basically leading to uh, the farmer suicide and quickly if we try to see basically we try to find out that uh, the reasons for the increasing suicide rates among the farmers are uh, one thing is the failure of the institution institutional credit for the small and the marginal farmers. Second is the withdrawal of government intervention from safety nets such as the fair price shops and the exclusion of poor and indebted from the food distribution system. Third is the increase of the agricultural input like the seed, fertilizers, pesticides. Fourth is the reduced price of agricultural produce. Fifth is the increased dependency of small farmers on money lenders. Sixth is the cumulative crop loss. So, I think uh, these are certain things uh, which has been uh, discussed with regard to the issue of uh, farmer suicide and uh, these are the reasons which we can just narrate uh, which can happen. Government of India and the state governments are trying to have various policies especially the calamity relief funds, the national <coughs> family benefit schemes, the Raitha uh, Sanjeevni schemes, the pledge loan schemes, Rashtriya Krishi Bhumi Yojana, minimum support price, 
and also <coughs> Sankat Harna, all these things are been introduced from the different forums uh, which are meant for basically uh, putting the farmers suicides away and the insurance schemes uh, which are basically coming in the form of uh, Janatha Rural Pension Accident Insurance, uh, Rajeshwari Mahila Kalyan Insurance, Bhageshri Female Child Kalyan Yojana and also we have the insurance for agricultural pump set. Along with that we have certain other policies like insurance on livestock and also we try to speak about the Gram Arogya Yojana. So, I think uh, these are certain things uh, which we have to see. The Life Insurance Corporation of India has, has introduced the Janashri Bhima Yojana. So, I think uh, these are certain things which can be seen as a remedial measure for bringing about uh, 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 the changes and to overcome the issue of farmer suicide. But the time has to show us that uh, how we are going to overcome these things. I think uh, wonderful studies have been done which basically tries to locate uh, the understanding of uh, the farmer suicide. Uh, Especially, I think I have referred in most of the places about Musafar Asadi's uh, work on farmer suicide, uh, science of distress in rural economy, and also the K. Go Balgopala's contribution in terms of rich peasant and the poor peasants is going to be a wonderful work. And apart from that, we have contribution by R. S. Deshpande, uh, then we have Michael Lipton's contribution, Why Poor Stay Poor, and also Varna Shiva's contribution on seeds of suicide the ecological and the human cost of seed monopine and globalization of agriculture is going to be a wonderful work. Uh, so, I think uh, A.R. Vasvi's work also is going to be quite significant especially with regard to the agrarian distress in Bidar. I think these are the works uh, which uh, we try to see uh, which are going to be uh, crucial for understanding this uh, uh, phenomenon further. So, friends uh, uh, with these things uh, and with these uh, discussions in mind. Uh, let us try to see the dynamics which is which has been there uh, in the uh, uh, countryside uh, because of the forces of changes uh, which were seen as negatively and farmer suicide is an outcome of that. So, thank you once again for the uh, patience listening and we will have the further discussions on these particular issues. Thank you to all of you.